Hello and welcome to another episode of Remember When with Dean O'Donnelly, a podcast where I, Dean O'Donnelly, ask my guests to remember when something happened in pop culture history that had some sort of effect on them. But we won't be doing that today because today is a very special episode. Um, I've got two guests with me today. The first one is my beloved husband. That sounds like you're dead. Is that what beloved means? I think beloved is a, a word you use after people are dead. Nobody <laughs> beloves you when you're alive. <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly alive. Yeah, you're you're. But dead. I'm the closest thing to death. Oh, you're so dead inside. Yeah, <laughs> that's dead just... inside and shattered. I've described you as dead inside so many times on so many people's podcasts, you know, Here. and nobody has disagreed. Meet me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The amount of people like <laughs> uh, honestly on tea with me or on even Kieran's, I went always dead inside, and they went, yeah. Oh him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> five kids, I put the fun in funeral. <laughs> I want my funeral to be fun. My ma said to me growing up, second guest first. What do you mean? You have two guests with you today. Oh, why? Sorry. Second guest is our son, Rocky Higgerty, mm-hmm. who is sleeping a foot away from my ankles. Right down here. <clears throat> He's in his car seat, not just like lying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> not just like you lie on the ground now. Um, we've had to bring the baby with us because we he is three weeks old and um, we're not ready. I'm not ready. We're not ready. You shouldn't be ready to leave your baby with anybody yet. Except uh, for you. You're I'm on your ready. fifth. You're ready to I'm go ready. on fucking holidays. Yeah. You come back after <clears throat> being away for two hours and you're all, did you enjoy your afternoon off? And uh, I'm like, I need 10 years off. Do you know what you should do is fuck right off. <laughs> you should just <laughs> move away, get a camper van Someday. and fuck off under the horizon. If that's what makes you happy. Anyway, no, it wouldn't. Um, Rocky's three weeks old. Um, he's a good baby, which is why we've brought him with us because he'll probably sleep. And if he doesn't sleep, we'll do, we'll give him what every man wants. All right, boob. Your tit. My, well, a tit. A tit. Yeah. The, we'll give him the good one. Yeah. The right one. It'll be the first I've seen one in about a month. I know. Me too. Um, oh no, my... Why? Hardly. <laughs> um, they're constantly out feeding him. I know, but I don't see them. I don't I don't look. Mm. Whereas I'll be freeze frame in this episode. I'll be like... Just to find a tit. Hitting the space bar. <laughs> trying to find a nipple. That's what they look like. <laughs> Uh, the reason that we're here today, besides just recording a po- well to record a podcast, is because after I've had Rocky, everyone I've had a lot of messages on Instagram. I don't know if you have as well of people just being like, "Can you please talk about the fertility experience and the IVF experience and the home birth experience and stuff like that?" Because um, we have talked about it before, but like not in depth, or not at length. Yeah, not even not just the specifics about it, about how you, it all came about and what you actually do. Because I found going through the whole IVF process that it was like getting a degree. Like there was so much information to wade through that you you treated it like a degree in a good way. I mean, like yeah. you, which is what you do with most projects or most things that you take on, and then I just take a back seat and you just give me the bulk of the information that I need. Yeah. So you do I, all the groundwork I and all the grand for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 like a degree. Yeah. But no, that's it. I why I like to be informed, I suppose. And there's because with IVF, there's so fucking much to learn. It's actually really annoying. So. Everyone can just listen to this podcast and then not have to wade through all the shit online. Although in saying that there, we aren't doctors. At least you're not anyway. No. Um, And we don't like have any fucking medical expertise, but this is just the, everything we'll say in this podcast is just our experience and stuff that we've learned yeah. from doing it. And sometimes you learn just as much, if not more, from a personal experience. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like, it's like when you do a stand-up comedy course and the person who's teaching has never done stand-up or it's like a football manager who had a shit career as a footballer, mm. it's like it's harder to respect them. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. Guardioli, you're like, you've won everything as a player. Or like your drama teacher in school. You're all, uh, well, What have you been in? Why are you here? Yeah. Do you know, it's yeah. so rude. I loved my <laughs> drama teacher. I have to say, do you know my drama teacher has been to see me gig a few times? The, mm. My GCSE drama teacher in Derry. Like if I'm gigging in Derry, she comes. That's class. I know. But the last time I gigged in Derry, I got fucking pure heckled oh, by yeah, this yeah. mad couple in the front row who were, like I was like eight and a half months pregnant, so it wasn't even that long ago. And this couple, I don't know if I talked about it on one of the previous podcasts, but this couple in the front row gave me absolute shit the whole time I was on stage. Arn Butler was on before me, Jordan Robinson, I think, uh, a few different comedians and... It was like a shit sto- like a shit storm. They were they were absolute assholes to me. And like one the fella like physically tried to like he was like threatening me almost. But anyway, um And Arn didn't step in though? No. Arn Arn it's was not like Arn. Arn was gone. <laughs> of course he was. I know. <laughs> Fucking second the fella when I got. He was like, I've got Arn go. was in his car. Yeah, yeah. I have a musical to listen to <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> he um 
so yeah, but anyway, my drama teacher was there and you're almost raging because you're like, you want your, you want your drama teacher to see you do, not that this is like a very niche thing to say, but you want your drama teacher to see you do mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was got, that was a shit gig. But um, right, so we'll go on to the first, we've been sent loads of questions. Um, your memory is awful, let's disclaimer that to begin with. What'd you say? Yeah. Like your yeah, memory is so bad. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Like you had to give me a refresher course on the way down the road here. Yeah, I was like, do you remember we two kids? And you're like, what? It's like I don't even know where we're going. I thought we were going to IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Our first, the first question is, why did we do IVF? You could probably say it's your fault. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much, yeah. You, why don't you explain? Well, it's a very taboo subject, isn't it? And that's the reason why I think a lot of people like us speaking out about it because it's. I don't know if it's like just a thing over here. Like I'd say it's in, in a, oh, I'd say it's worldwide, Sean. But I people mean, don't talk about AVF yeah, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, where there's that almost like guilt or shame or embarrassment when things like that don't embarrass me because they're completely out of your hands. Like in this instance, personally to me, it <laughs> was, was literally in, in my hands. hands yeah. yeah, and I cut cut ties in your hands and not <laughs> yeah. in your dick. <laughs> yeah, but um. I think with things like this, you know, it's like if 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 you tell me you have diarrhea, I'm like, well, that's you haven't chosen to have diarrhea. Do you know what I mean? And I'm being hypothetical here. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah. you get diarrhea. We all get diarrhea. We all get diarrhea. But do you know what I mean? It's like one of them things. It's like you can't, you haven't chosen to do this. Mm. This is just something that has happened. It's the yeah. it's the hand you're dealt. So I find no embarrassment or shame about. Yeah. Stuff like that. But, but you know, um, that's the thing. They say that women, when when people have fertility issues, they say that women feel shame slash guilt towards it because they feel like they've been failed biologically because for an age, it's been like a woman's job is to harbour children and mm. deliver children to their man. And men, f- and then they feel like their body has failed them because that's their, that's like their biological, that they're supposed to fulfill that need biologically. Mm. And then men feel embarrassment yeah. because of the sort of toxic masculinity, macho thing where they're like, oh, well, my sperm doesn't work. That's and it. And then you want to carry on the family name and stuff as well. And you probably feel a bit of stress and anxiety towards that, you know, where it's like you're, this is your duty to, you know, as a father and as a, as a man to sort of carry on the the, the family yeah. and you don't want it to stop at you but so why um, did we do IVF is the question right so I have three kids you five see I your had, fucking memory I had three kids <laughs> and um, I decided to get a vasectomy when I was like mid twenties yeah at after the, your at, third at the latest after the third I was like right I'm done I'm done having children here I'll finally get my life back mid thirties to forty <laughs> right okay <laughs> as in You'll the, have more free time. The responsibilities will, you know, diminish yeah. and I'll I'll get more time to do my own thing and get Project, a part of more my More time life for back. activities. Yeah, pretty much. So um got the snip. Then um little did I know I would go on to meet the love of my life. Um then she dumped me, I met you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh obviously we I, were I, I to want to have a family with you and you know, you were I uh, seen how good of a a parent you were around the boys and stuff too and how, how well you adapted to that despite being early to mid 20s yourself mm-hmm. when I was what 28 I you think were I was 23? 22 22 23 oh 23 maybe when we met and you were 20 yeah you were 28 yeah. and like I think back too like I became not really a stepma at that age because it took a few yeah, years a before few we years. lived together yeah. with the boys and before it was like an official thing but I did start like step parenting from like 22, 23 which is mm, nuts I know. suppose you started parenting when you were 20 yeah Um. so yes yeah, so you the three boys you got a vasectomy and we decided to have kids and then you went on a waiting list through the NHS to get a vasectomy yeah. reversal <laughs> And after about a year and a half, we got a, got letter, a letter through, the, through door. The, the door saying, Sean Hegarty, your colonoscopy appointment is next week. Yeah. And Wrong hole. Sh- Sean was, no, but at the time <laughs> you were like, oh, they must need to put a camera up my ass to figure out my sperm. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think they do. And if it hadn't have been for me going, I don't think they do, yeah. you'd have been lying in a doctor's bed with a camera up your hip. And Imagine it be- in, there was loads of like, sperm on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> They were like, there it is. <laughs> Imagine they were just looking for your sperm. <laughs> Wrong hole, lads. Um, but you'd have been on a doctor's bed with a camera up your hip. 
mm. until you eventually would have went like, what's this got to do with a vasectomy ritual? And the doctor's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> We're here checking out your, <laughs> we thought you pills. <laughs> what are yeah. you talking about? So Which basically. Which you wouldn't need a camera up your ass for. Why? Because the pills come out of your ass. They're not always. Oh. We'll get to some that. Some of them are up there. <laughs> Why? The pills stay inside your ass and some of them come out. Okay. They can be in and out. <laughs> in and out and in and out. Like in and out. Like, <laughs> but the only that me stepping in and going, I'll ring the doctors to go, what the fuck? And they were like, oh, someone put him on the wrong list. Mm-hmm. You'd have been in having that camera up your arse. I know. And that's so typical of you. Like, this must be what I'm supposed to do. Oh, oh, oh does it go in my ass, does it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Well, if you said I'll so, try, doctor. <laughs> yeah, try not to hate it. <laughs> um so yeah. then you then had to go on a new list. And then that was another, what, year, two years? I think it was maybe another year. I think they did fast track you of some sorts because they made a mistake yeah, in the jump along list for a year and a half. So say two and a half years later, that's eventually when you got your vasectomy reversal. Mm-hmm. And that didn't work. I know. After and all that. Do you know what, too? A lot of people, a lot of men especially, don't know like the ins and outs of even a vasectomy. Whereas people think, like there's people probably watching this at home right now going... I would get a vasectomy, no problem. But does that mean you can't have sex anymore or you can't skate, uh, skate or whatever? Do you know what I mean? people think that he just like powder. Like dust powder. comes out? Yeah. Uh, like she takes it and then just... She boom, takes Like it? vape just comes out her mouth. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it has to be released somehow. But nothing changes. Nothing, nothing. And it, also, it is, not to be graphic, exactly you still have sperm but no semen in it. Sperm is the liquid yeah. and semen is what's inside it. Yeah, the There's tadpoles. sperm but there's no semen. Yeah. And so, as far so as I'm people concerned, don't know that. People don't know that. It's semen, but not sperm in it. Yeah. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Do you yeah, know I was speaking to... Uh, you know too much. <laughs> hopefully I'm allowed to say this, but I was speaking to a guy the other day, right? And he had kids already and he went in for a vasectomy and on his way home from the hospital, his wife told him that she was pregnant. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you'd be fuming. <laughs> you'd be fuming. Yeah. Um, how many kids do they have? Loads. I mean, uh, you would, had they a had two, I think, maybe three. Yeah, you yeah. would. Um, they had three. Okay, I believe we got four now. Um, so that was two thousand and fourteen. I think it all started. So it was a couple of years. You got the reversal, and I remember the day getting the letter through that was like nil pas. There's nothing in your in your sperm. But see, that's semen. another thing too, because what I wasn't told was yeah when you do the the activity to yourself when you molest yourself, you have to don't say that. When you masturbate, well, you have to to end of the. Uh, but you said when you molest yourself. Ah, you know what I mean. All oh, right, <laughs> I thought you said that by accident. I was like, no. "Whoa!" <laughs> so apparently, once you you do that, Aye. once you do the job, you just on yourself. Yeah, you have to like put it under your arm or keep it, keep warm. it warm. Whereas I just had it on the seat with a wee seat belt around it. Do you know what I mean? I literally just. <laughs> oh, you. Yeah, that's right. I just you had did... you in a passenger seat with a wee cushion with the thing on top. Yeah. of Yeah, I, I went to the hospital and the car guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just walked in the reception and roll. Where do I put this? Spat it out when I got. So I went. Yeah, but that that's the most embarrassing thing for me is when you go. Excuse me, where do I put this? I where do I put my jizz? Yeah. It's the worst too. It's like, do you know when you have your antenatal appointments in the hospital when you're pregnant and every time you go in, they're like, did you bring your pee sample? Did you bring your urine sample? And you're like, did I? What? Mm. I, I've carried a fucking cup of piss from my house. Aye. No, I haven't. And also you didn't tell me I had to bring one. Why do I assume that every time I enter this hospital, you want a cup of my piss? Mm-hmm. I'll go pee now. But every time. And then you come out of the toilet and you have to sit in the waiting area. But these are clear bottles and everyone around you is just sat with a cup of piss in their hand. Mm, just holding it. A wee pot of piss. And you're like, are we all sitting here aware that everyone's holding their own piss and no one's talking about it? I know. And it goes everywhere. Like they, they haven't figured it out. The syringes are shit. Um, Imagine Facebook Marketplace is just like loads of cups of your piss. Of mine? Yeah. Oh, wow. Every time you bring in the hospital, they're all stupid bitch. Dairy things girls we need. blame you. <laughs> Doing an Artie's piss. She, Pay for a cup. Yeah, I can't believe she keeps pissing into a cup for us. <laughs> Imagine. In for an eye test and all. <laughs> you need your piss. <laughs> yeah. Imagine nobody else around me in the waiting area had a cup of piss and I'm all, why are we all sitting here with piss? And they're like, what? <laughs> um, so yeah, you so got, yeah, got the got the reversal. reversal. The reversal didn't work. And the uh, day you, we received the letter was the day that you were going down to do the Ireland's Got Talent semi-finals. That's right. <clears throat> and I remember getting the letter and I opened it and read it because I'm the letter opener in our house. You don't open your own mail. I mean, who gets good news through the post? 
Well, that's true. Nobody? Well, we've got one the other day saying you're now eligible for a credit card. <laughs> 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 that was fun. <laughs> that's good news now, bad news down the line. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I remember opening the letter and crying my eyes out. And you came down, do you remember? Mm-hmm. You came down and found me crying and loving him because I was like, well, that's it. Because now we have to do IVF. That is, because I was hoping like, okay, this will work because then you can just try naturally. But then I was like, well, fuck's sake, now we absolutely have to do IVF. And you know that's going to be years and it's a process. That was a dark day that day because I remember I didn't sleep the whole night because I had the Ireland's Got Talent semi-final. Yeah. Plus I whitened my teeth overnight. Oh, I. And your gums were I brutal. I burnt the gums off myself. Like, I mean, I was in agony. And then I come down the stairs your and you're broke still. lying, crying in a heap. Mm. With just cups of your piss everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I now have to go down and just and try and live on TV, yeah. try and be funny. And also do non-tested jokes. Hmm. You had a whole pile of jokes that were game show themed that yeah. you'd never done but in front I'd, of an I'd audience. I'd for that. Bizarre. Yeah. But that's another podcast. Um, so then that's the, that's the moment that we were like, we now have to do IVF. And I don't know, I was, were we married? We were um, married, were we not, at this stage? Yeah, I, well, oh, I, mean, I think we, I did Aaron's Got Talent 2017 maybe. Did we get married the year before that? 2016, right, we got so married. We're married by this stage. Remember, we got a pen. <laughs> we got a pen. To, we, we, I, I was, ordered a pen. We, when, before when we were like the build up to us getting married, we got, you did a lot of stuff and you were like, right, if you can get the pen to sign the registrar, that will do. Yeah. So I ordered this pen and got like the date and stuff. Sean and Diona. Uh, Whatever the wedding date was. The wedding on it. date. And we got it and you opened it lifted the lid off the pen you were like for fuck's sake you've got the wrong date and engraved I looked, on the pen engraved and I looked at it and I was like no way and you were like can you do anything right and then you took I a picture of it photograph. and sent it to your mates and your mates were like do you know that, that is, is your right wedding date, date? <laughs> and we were like alright <laughs> it was me that was the ticket <laughs> and they were like that is when you're getting married yeah. but neither of us even knew no but we still forget all the time what our wedding date is I 27th still... or 20th because we got engaged on 27th or 20th it's the your year birthday well. is on the 28th Eighth. It's like there was just, that was the third thing that had happened, either the 27th or 20th, and we just couldn't. It's the year as well. I always forget if it's 2016 or 2017. 16, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's when we locked into IVF. So, the next question is, why didn't we go through the NHS? So, we got referred from the doctor after your vasectomy failure. <laughs> fail. Um, and we went to, so then we went to the doctor referred us to Belfast Fertility, which is a fertility clinic in Belfast that's NHS and private, so you can go through both to get fertility treatment on there. But we went in and they did fertility checks on me to make sure we would be eligible for IVF, which we were. I'm working just fine. And we went and uh, then the girl was like, the doctor was like, you do need IVF, but you are not eligible for NHS treatment because you because you have kids. So we weren't eligible for NHS treatment, which we believe to this day we should have contested because yeah, of the amount of people we've spoken to since who were like, oh, I had two kids and my third, I struggled to get pregnant for it. We got it. We got NHS IVF or people who are like, oh, I remarried and I had kids to a previous marriage and I got NHS treatment, so we probably should have went for a second opinion. Mm-hmm. But we just, I think because as well, we knew the NHS waiting time was a couple of years. It's like, it couldn't be two to three years that we were just like, for fuck's sake, like, let's just get the ball rolling ourselves and just save and pay for it or whatever. Um, But that was quite shitty because we probably could have got it done through the NHS. Yeah, but at the same time, we felt like almost time wasn't on our side or we just, we it, it's in our nature to just mm-hmm. rush everything and be really fast and do things like things you done yesterday instead of now or in yeah. the future do you know what I mean so it was yeah it just was one of those times where we just were like we've waited this long yeah it's been such a drawn out process to even get here let's just continue it on as quickly as possible and another question is how long was the waiting time at the clinic in the Czech Republic and did we self refer but before that the reason why we chose so the the the, the journey to find in our clinic was like Jesus Christ. It was There's cost, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was at, pretty at the much time it cost. was down to cost. We yeah. didn't have a lot of money, and it was like, where's what's the cheap? What's the cheapest option that we could also then go for a wee holiday? Hmm. And we thought the this place at Burno looked lovely. And when yeah, and when we got there too, 
it was scorching hot for like yeah eight or nine days. It was like mid thirties or late. I it was it yeah. was really hot, and so we did loads of research on loads of clinics. And I genuinely think at the day, so I only knew one other couple who had done IVF at the time, and it's two women and they have we twin boys. And I'm pretty sure I remember talking to her, like the, the, one of the girls who was my friend. She was saying something about like there were still clinics at that time. We're now we're talking like four years ago, we maybe five years ago with this process at this mm-hmm. stage, who wouldn't tr- treat same sex couples. That they they were like, oh, we, I was like, why did you choose to go to the one you went to? Because they went abroad as well, and they're like, oh, well, there was loads of them that wouldn't that won't treat gay couples, isn't that's that? And that's only like a handful of years ago. Like they deserve to be unhappy equally as much. As yeah, they, totally. they deserve to be knackered too. <laughs> But that's the thing, and like even even the if you did go NHS here, I think it's changed since. But if you did go NHS here, whenever we started, you got one round of IVF in England. You get three, and in Scotland you get two, or else it's the other way around. But we get the least out of like the UK and Ireland amount of like help for fertility treatment. It's not really seen as something that's like like I remember the 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 sort of opinion that I was met with by not only medical professionals but by people I knew was largely. You have stepchildren. You should be happy enough. Mm. Why do you need to go have your own? Do you know what I mean? As mm. if that would fulfill my maternal, biological, or whatever. Like my my want to have kids was like, why are you not fulfilled with raising somebody else's? But that's like saying, just <clears throat> why don't you just go and sit in a park for an hour and just watch kids, and then just go home I, and live your life again? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. awful. I know, like that. But that is what some people. I, yeah. I I know specifically one person in my head who literally said that to me. Would you not just be happy with having stepkids? And I was like. That's so shitty to say to somebody because obviously at this stage too we were trying for years because we weren't aware that your vasectomy wasn't wasn't your vasectomy reversal didn't work, and then you know we had a failed round of IVF to begin with as well. So it was a long process before we actually got pregnant. But the amount of people who were like, I thought it was just so insensitive because people don't know what to say to somebody who's going through fertility treatment because they think. So I think if you've not got a maternal or paternal bone in your body, then you don't understand people who do. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. But when we went over, then, as you say, the first time we, when I said there, it was scorching hot for like eight or nine days because you were bedridden for, what, 10 days, weren't you? Yeah. And on the 10th day, we had to go for the embryo transfer. Aye. But um, it was scorching for like nine days. And then on that day, it started pissing, pissing down, down. And we were like, we were going to call our wee baby Rain. Yeah. Was it if it was a boy or a girl or just as if it was a boy? I think if it was a boy or a girl, we were going to call it Rain. We were going to call it Rain yeah. because of obviously after Dwight Schrute from The Office, but yeah. we also like the name as well. I think it is primarily because of Dwight Schrute from The Office. His yeah. real name is Rain Wilson. Yeah. But it pissed down that day and we were like, oh my God, that's this a sign. This is a sign, yeah. Because that was the same even when Winter was born, finally, um, yeah. on our second try. And we were coming home from the the hospital and we were like right we have to decide a name here and just as we got to our front door we decided right let's call her winter but this was in april so we got in made a coffee put our feet up and within about an hour's time it snowed and it Mm -hmm. snowed for about four days and we were like fucking hell this is mind-blowing like we've called our child winter and now it's snowed and if anything it's made it even better that we've called this child a cool fm cash call so (laughs) (laughs) fingers crossed any day now just wait as my phone's on loud just in case do you know what? That'd pay back the money the fuckers have cost us. Cool FM on phone calls? I like, no, cool FM ca- No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's mad, though, because that is true. The day that we were put that embryo in, it did piss down, and we were like, that's definitely rain, because whenever we then got pregnant with winter, I was like, I would definitely call this child rain, but then we were like, ah, it feels yeah, like that can. first embryo was definitely rain. So before we get ahead of ourselves... Um, but then as well with him, do you remember... We obviously decided on the name Rocky for months. Aye. But on the night that your waters broke, Rocky was, Rocky on, was TV. on TV. And we, uh, our minds were blown. This Swear. is. Where? Oh, I is know it? it is. I know. Is it? Yeah. On Terrestrial? ITV2, probably. But this was on mainstream ITV. I, like, yeah. Did I think? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We were on like, on all the main four channels. This is a sign, but then he was born after midnight, so. Aye, but still, whilst I was in labour, Rocky was on TV. Because when I, I said that to one of the midwives, and she was all, isn't that why you called him Rocky then? And I was all, no. hardly. <laughs> I was all, that's Aye, like, Have you met the Nolan show? Yeah, Our other fucking yeah. child? <laughs> You're trying to try Emmerdale? <laughs> For fuck's sake. And his brother, Holmes under the hammer, fucking <laughs> go through all the names. Yeah, one was born at 729, and one was born at 731. There's Emmerdale and EastEnders. <laughs> Twins. Um, so yes, so uh, the next question is, <clears throat> what was the clinic care like? So the clinic in the Czech Republic. We it's went great. to a clinic called Reprofit in Brno, and I thought they were brilliant. Now the thing is, 
is they're obviously so far away and there's obviously a bit of a language buyer, but they do have brilliant English. Yeah. And they're so, so thorough and so quick at getting back to you. Um, so we, it was so quick because they're private and you're paying them. What are you smirking for? Oh no, I'm just laughing at all the things that have happened up to now. Oh. <laughs> it's a great episode. <laughs> I'm having fun. Keep going. <laughs> um, right, okay. The clinic, I, so <clears throat> we, you basically just contact whoever you want. If you're paying for it, I don't think you need referred or anything by a doctor, but I think you might have to provide. They, they, they talk you through what you need to do. You need to have like uh, proof that you're eligible for IVF mm-hmm. by means of scans of your like womb and your follicles and your ovaries and your testicles, I don't know, all the bits, all your mm-hmm. reproductive organs, all those things. So you, they, they basically talk you through. You have to do your scans here privately, so we need to pay for all those privately, send those across, and then they go, okay, this is the treatment you need. And for us, it was a treatment called ICSI, ICSI, which is a type of IVF. And <clears throat> that costs around three grand over there. Here it costs about eight. And then there's a million thousand other costs included. Now, when we were looking <clears throat> at prices for Belfast and here... Obviously, when on paper at the very beginning, yeah. it was very clear that Reprofit in Czech Republic was the cheapest option. Aye. And it obviously worked so well for us because even though with the, let's call him Rain, the embryo that we put in uh-huh. at the start didn't work because that was because you had OHSS. Oh, wow. But then it worked both other times that we went over, which is yeah. very lucky for us. And I'm not saying anyone who's going to go, that's going to happen to yeah. because that's obviously very specific for us. But, but did I think we they're not, good. But did we not work out after that it actually didn't cost that much it cheaper. didn't cost that much well I think because then you have to add in your accommodation mm. and your flights and, and your spending money and all the private else. scans you pay for which are included if you do it here in Belfast if you if you go to a local clinic you know you can go in probably daily I don't know how often you go in but they do your scans for you they do your blood tests for you they do all those things whereas here we were having to pay to go to different clinics to get scans done and blood tests yeah. done and whatever tests done so you're paying for all of those but did we not say by the end of it after we had finished that it actually wasn't that big a difference for us to sacrifice having care at home and having everything on home soil rather than I definitely going away? would have preferred to have done it at home yeah but what is the massive price difference does it work out where it's just a couple of hundred quid does it work out where it's thousands it depends on what you need because then we needed a thing called TC which is a sperm extraction from your balls Mm. so then you need that and that's the guts of a grand which not everyone would need that do you hear him? I know you can hear the baby in the background just going like he sounds like a wee goat most of the time doesn't he he's like I don't know that's what goats sound like is it? grass that's what (laughs) Um, and then there's there's loads of extra costs like freezing the sperm and um, what else is there like medication that's mm-hmm. included in your costs here as well whereas we had to find our so that we found the best pharmacy is a pharmacy called Fertility to You I never knew there was online pharmacies that you can mm-hmm. buy your shit from yeah. but you need a prescription from your clinic obviously right Lee man is that this sneezes no I think he's just waking it up uh. um, so I don't think the cost was that much less overall when you factor in all that stuff and then obviously you're flying as well to check it but Berno was two flights away it's yeah. a long time away as well and then when we said too when you had OHSS which is like like massive it's swelling ovarian of hyperactivity the ovaries yeah. you were in severe pain and we were just Excuse me. We were just literally like you were lying in bed in a in a wee hotel room in the Czech Republic. Couldn't move for ten days. You couldn't move. And also, which is quite sad, at the time we we literally spent every penny we had on IVF. We had no yeah. extra money, and we literally lay there. I lay there in agony, excruciating agony, going, "I can't afford to get any medical help mm. here because we'd have to pay for it." And plus, as well, because we had put so much time and effort into it all, and going away. That w- if we'd have told the clinic, they would have said, right, no, we can't put this embryo, embryo in because you have this. So you need to go home, wait a month, wait till your cycle matches all again and then come back and, and we then we'll put it in. To... We were just too desperate. So we didn't say anything. We went on the 10th day, put the embryo in and it do- obviously didn't stick because you were so sick. Yeah. And the doctor, whenever he put, he was literally inserting the embryo into me and he was like, your ovaries are really swollen. You're, mm-hmm. you're obviously very sore here, aren't you? And I was like, yep. Yeah. And he was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you shouldn't be doing this. But we had, ele- so this is the thing. We had 11 embryos that were all grade A. They were all really good embryos. And that meant that we sort of were like, well, let's just take a chance because hopefully we don't need to do this 11 times. Mm. And if we only get one baby out of it, we'll be really grateful. So basically, if you don't know the process of IVF, just quickly, like scientifically, this is how it works. You stimulate your ovaries by taking injections daily for like a few weeks beforehand. 
and it's a hormone treatment. And that basically, your what happens in a woman's body is you release one, your body like develops one egg a month. And if it doesn't get fertilized by a sperm, it releases from your body, which is your period. So basically what you do during a month of injections and stuff is they're trying to get loads of eggs to develop. So I had 22. So mm-hmm. basically it's like 22 menstrual cycles at the one time of your body growing 22 eggs. Your body only does that once a month, but you do, I did 22 simultaneously. And they remove all of the eggs and then they mix them with the sperm that they get from you and they try and fertilize into embryos. Listen to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and we end up with like 19 embryos at the start. Embryos are doctor words for just basically babies. And they incubate them for five days. And here's the genius thing I think it's amazing is when they come out, they're three weeks old. Yeah. After five days, they're three weeks gestationally. So when they put them it's in amazing. your body, you're already three weeks pregnant that day. Yeah. Which is amazing, isn't it? I don't know. It's just a matter of that. your body keeping hold of that then, yeah. isn't it? It's like so then you're only you're only holding the baby for thirty seven weeks or me, three thousand years. Mm. But like that's the science that is unbelievable. And like the producer and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, I don't think he will. The producer of Bridesmaids is thirty one of a camera he's probably gonna kill me if he's like twenty nine, I don't know. But he is an IVF baby. It's amazing. And like I don't know anyone that age yeah. who was born through IVF like thirty years ago. That would have been such experimental work back then. Mm. And like, I remember hearing on the news for the first time like a test tube baby test has babies. been born. Yeah. And yeah. I I remember whenever we started doing IVF going, that's a different thing, isn't it? Test tube mm. babies. It's like, no, that's just what people called it when it was like they were starting that treatment. But the science of it's fucking phenomenal to think yeah. that in five days they incubate them and like they come out three weeks old because obviously they need to check and I hate using the word viable but that's the word where they want to check if like okay can they make it to three weeks can they survive because if mm. they can then they're good enough to put into your body but it's like a whole thing isn't it when they put the embryo in like you watch on a, oh god they put this up, up on a big screen because in another room is like the incubator and they you see them almost like suction it and like a syringe and then a woman comes into the room and she's like right say your name out loud and hold up your ID it's like a it's like a whole <laughs> yeah, so you're not like stealing someone's baby case, yeah you're yeah. like <laughs> fucking mug shot and you're like 28th of 3rd 89 do you yeah. know you know and then they put the MB one but you were told there's the screen film the screen <laughs> I was like, fill in that screen because that's the that's the embryo coming out of the fucking incubator in the room. And what'd you do? Film a fucking other screen that was blank. <laughs> There's nothing. We don't have the footage of it now. Yeah. You filmed something else. And I was like, what happened? That air? And you were like, I'm filming the fucking wrong screen. It you is were, what it is. You were filming the one. No, you were supposed to film the screen where then they put it in, where that's like a ultrasound of my stomach. But you were filming the screen where they take it away from the incubator, which is fucking yeah. pointless. Which happened two minutes before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was done. It was done by that stage. <laughs> So the first time didn't work, um, um, but the, uh, so I the think thing what here is taught in care. schools too is that girls can only get pregnant for like forty-eight hours in a month. Like, like you're talking twenty-four, thirty-six. Aye, mental. That needs taught in schools. Did not know that. No. Nope. Like, how did it take me to like be doing a fertility treatment in my late twenties to know that? I did you know that, Dan? No. Did you know it until there now? <clears throat> so when a woman's ovulating. Aye. Yeah. So when a woman's ovulating, she literally has like a Tiny twenty-four window. to thirty-six to forty-eight hour window. Because also. When was it we forgot the passports? Was it the first time? It was because yeah. it was pissing down my rain. Yeah. So we arrived at the clinic to have the embryo transfer <coughs> and we turned up and they were like, have you got your passports? And we were like, no. one no. told us we had to bring our passports. Well, they did. Obviously, they were like, it was just in the... No, dim- at the beginning, not at... at oh, the, oh, this was, yeah, this was the It was in a mountain of emails yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Make sure when you yeah. turn up on the day, you bring your ID so you can do that thing where you're like, this is my ID, this is my face, that's my embryo, mm-hmm. put it up my dude. <laughs> and th- we, we didn't have our passports and we had to run back to our hotels and get it because you have a small window of opportunity. run. We both got the bus and then you ran the last bit. But okay. I was, remember, fucking swollen <laughs> my ovaries. So I remember when. Yeah. Remember my ovaries were the size of watermelons? <laughs> and uh, we went, uh, because you've only got a small window of opportunity because they, they freeze the embryos or they thaw them out or whatever they're fucking doing. So that you've got a wee while before it dies. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it, you have to use it. Um, That was like a, a, a deleted scene from the notebook that when we got off that last train and I was like fucking just head up sprinting through to the, the hotel room <laughs> through the yeah. rain to get our passports. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so we've talked about costs. So anyway, the f- okay, so here the next question is what did we do like reflexology or yoga or anything during the two week wait? The two week wait is a term people will be familiar with if they've done IVF. If you haven't, it's the two weeks between the embryo transfer and the date that you're supposed to take your pregnancy test. It wasn't two weeks for us? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost every single day. Well, no, the first one we waited like a week. 
Yeah. Or 10 days. We were supposed to wait we the were supposed to. two to three weeks. Yeah. We, we couldn't help ourselves. The first time we did wait a good while though because you're supposed to wait because you can get a false... You can get a false positive and then it can become a negative and you can be really disheartened. So you're supposed to wait two weeks. I think we waited about nine days, maybe the first time. But it's a painful long time because... I think as long as you don't get your hopes up too much and you know, you know that you there's always help. that chance that you could... I know, but I mean, you don't want to do a pregnancy test after four days and go, happy days, let's go tell all our family. Exactly. You have to... You, you should probably give it those two weeks, yeah. if not more, and just keep checking and just go like, okay, it's still there. Which and is what just we did the next as, time. It's still there rather than, uh, yes, we're pregnant. So during that time, I treated my body like a temple. Remember, I didn't drink Pepsi Max. Yeah. You were hanging from the ceiling <laughs> with your feet. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, namaste, motherfucker. I, mm. I didn't drink Pepsi Max and that's a big deal for me. Yeah. And I didn't like drink coffee and I was like wouldn't have any like I was trying not to like put any chemicals into my body and I was trying to like make sure it was like, going like gentle walks I know but you know, I just mean like I don't know a Chinese yeah. <laughs> <Dip -dab>. yeah and then we got do you remember whenever we took the test because we woke up really early one I've morning I've taken so many pregnancy tests the only you're years. such an I... asshole <laughs> <laughs> it's a blur do you watch on so Still have I that's oh, alright <laughs> where I met you doesn't count so <laughs> Um, so anyway, yeah, and it didn't work, and then that's it. You're really, you're. I suppose we're as much as you go. Oh, it's not going to work the first time. I think that's the attitude you're supposed to go in with because IVF, I think, generally takes three to five times. Like statistically, I think people take a lot longer than what we did. Mm. But <clears throat> you're of course going. Oh, but it'll, it'll work for me. Like you just you hope that it does, and it didn't. And then that was like the September before COVID. Because yeah. then COVID hit just after Christmas and we were like, for fuck's sake. Because I think we were going to go around January, February we and we put it off due to work. We, we did, yeah. And then we were like, why did we do this? Like, obviously, having kids is the most important thing. Like, work will come and go, but your child is your child, you yeah. know. And also, like, I know it's shit, but, like, your biological, biological clock ticks when you're a woman and the fucking mm. world constantly reminds you of it that, like, you need to, if you're going to have kids, that's why the process for us started, like, in my early to mid-twenties because I knew this would be, from from the day we decided to have kids, do we actually had our first daughter and the whole our daughter the whole time we were going through some sort of fertility treatment or even tests or waiting on a fucking colonoscopy appointment that <laughs> shouldn't have been waiting on. It took about seven years. Hmm. And by that stage I, I was then thirty when I had winter. So which I know isn't that old, but as regards back pregnancies in a hospital, by the time you're thirty five, you're a geriatric pregnancy. Like when's a female's um prime when years? they're like fifteen. Isn't that unbelievable? Your body is like built for childbearing when mm. you're like mid-teens, mental, and that's when your body is at its best to give birth. That doesn't suit the world that we live in and mm. neither should it. So like people shouldn't, you know, well, you can do what you want, but like giving birth at 15 is fucking nuts. Yeah. But I, as you get older, it gets obviously more difficult. Like I'm now, uh, my next birthday, I'll be 35. So if I didn't give birth till next year, till Rocky, I'd have been considered a geriatric pregnancy and they wouldn't have let me do a home birth, I don't think. Jeez. Yeah. So, um, is that a perfect segue? I was going to say, yeah, we could move into the home birth stuff now. Obviously yeah. then, hold on, our, our, our two kids are both then frozen embryo transfers, which is the mad thing mm -hmm. because we did one big batch of sperm and one batch of eggs at the very start that were mixed into those 11 embryos that we then Many froze. years ago? Four? No, more. No, winter's two. And then there was, so four. It's 2017, wasn't it? The year after our wedding? No, it was... The year after that, 2018? Was, yeah. Okay. Four or five years. But all the embryos were made in that day and all frozen then. So Rocky and Winter and the first one and the eight that are left there were all made on the same day and it was just potluck who came first. Mm -hmm. Like Winter's the older sister but she could easily be the younger sister and he could be the older brother. Mind blown. We could have put them in at the same time and they'd be twins. Non-identical twins. How do you much? want to hear more options? Are you getting, are you getting up to high dough? I nope. thought you were like you're fucking... You're, no, you're, I've always said story but go for it. You're making me anxious. No, I have a side story. Go. No, you, go on ahead. I watched a video yesterday of two identical twins mm -hmm. that were cousins and brothers because their dads were brothers and identical twins which meant they shared like 100% DNA or something mm -hmm. and then they married two identical sisters and they both had children uh -huh. but their children were both 100% DNA of oh so they've been born by two different women yeah but they're cousins and brothers but they're brothers because their DNA is 100%. Yeah. Oh my God. They have God. the same DNA. Do you know what you could get away with there? Murder. Murder. You could murder someone and the other person would get blamed for it. But then your twin's going to prison for life. 
better than you. Hmm. That's what I say. That's my motto. <laughs> <laughs> if you're under murdering, I don't know. That's I your motto in, our, motto in our house, yeah. better than you. <laughs> you just walk down the stairs every morning. No, my motto better is you. if you're under murdering. <laughs> um, so were they, were they born at the same time? Because they, again, um, could be born 10 years apart and still have the exact yeah. same DNA. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I think they were. They, they looked identical. Like they were mm. identical twins. My That's blog. mad. Um, yes, yeah, so home birth is the other thing people wanted us to talk about loads um, because we had a really crap experience. I've talked about it in my podcast before. There's a clip on my Instagram about how shit our experience was of giving birth. During pandemic, I had COVID, you had COVID. Winter definitely had COVID when she was born. It was a shit show. The midwife was horrible to us. The hospital was a bit shitty to us. The restrictions were were absolutely yeah. outrageous that now, people now had to give birth by time, themselves this was in the, in the middle of the pandemic like when it was at its most serious mm. so we can understand you can almost let it slide with the hospital you know you imagine yes. it's not always like that but, but the restrictions at the time there was football matches happening yeah there was football matches happening in the premiership yeah, is that the, is that the is that the full term Premier Premiership? All right, yeah, same thing. <laughs> there was football matches happening. Yeah, people were giving birth and they're in a hospital, and that doesn't that doesn't seem right. Yeah, but Liverpool won the league that year. All oh, right, fair enough. It's the first time in thirty years. Fair enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So fuck them bitches. Let them give yeah. birth by themselves. <laughs> but that's What's the thing. more important. It just felt so unfair, and you weren't allowed into the hospital with me yeah, originally. With, with one shift, with the day shift team in the hospital, I wasn't allowed in. And with the night shift team, I was allowed in, which was yeah. just mad. <clears throat> I think because I sat in the car for like an hour waiting to see if you had given birth, had dilated, were dilated enough to stay in, or if I was taking you home. Mm. And we literally kissed and said goodbye, and it was like, "See yeah, you when I have kiss. the baby." I didn't even kiss to get pregnant. I kissed yes, no <laughs> Um So yes, that's the but reason yeah. why we decided to do a home birth this time, was because our experience in the hospital was really shit. And as well, the worst thing about. Uh, like after you give birth hanging about in the hospital hanging about for like a day the on beds are so 10 people to do paperwork mm. it's awful yeah that's the thing you just want to like for instance like just after we had Rocky an hour and a half later we were with a glass of champagne on the sofa and then mm. went up to our own beds to go to sleep at a shower yeah. my own shower it was yeah. great yeah. Um, with the home birth thing most people are wanting to know about, like lots of people didn't think it was a thing that you could do you absolutely can do it and also it's cheaper for the NHS for you to do a home birth mm -hmm. because there's statistically way less likely for you to have any interventions as regards epidural, forceps, um, what's the other one? Is it methadone or whatever? Oh, There's no. C-section. All those things are less likely if you give birth at home, mainly because it's not available and also because... There's no doctors there to push it on you to go, right, let's just get this baby out and go on with four steps. Or let's just, do you want your epidural? There's no epidural there. Yeah. So you physically can't have one. The birth at home team were very kind of holistic, holistic. almost, weren't they? They were very like, this is very much in your hands and we can be as hands-on or as non-hands-on as you want. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the statistics they shared with us all at the birth at home event a few weeks ago as well, when Rocky was like, what, three days Two old days or something, old. we went to it. <clears> and um, one of the statistics they shared with us was that only three children since this whole thing started 18 months ago have had to go to hospital, have been yeah. moved to hospital from the birth. They also said that nationwide, 47% of women that's their first time giving birth when they give birth at home do need to go to the hospital afterwards. Not in major, but like maybe they had extra blood loss or they... It's their first time, so you're not as accustomed to giving birth, obviously. Whereas in the Southern Trust that we're in, zero. They've never had any hospital mm. transfers of first-time mums, which is a credit to that team specifically. Yeah. So the birth, what happens basically, to talk everyone through it, is that you decide that you want to have a home birth. You tell your doctor or your midwives or whoever it is you go to your first appointment. Some people are met with like, no, they don't want to do that. Like my sister-in-law did a home birth and she was met with a bit of pushback from her midwives and stuff. And I think it was lack of um, practice. Like they didn't do that many home births. So they were sort of shitting themselves mm. to do one. With where we are in the Southern Trust, they're dab hands at it. And the, straight away they were like, yeah, that sounds great. And they knew that statistically you have a better birth when you give birth at home. You're less stressed. You're in and, your own environment. And as well, not, not a, a lot of people sort of remember that 
it's your body, it's your life. It's yeah. you, you can That's like the thing. don't just because someone's wearing a uniform or has a jacket on or a coat or yeah. you know is holding a certificate or whatever. They can't tell you what to do. They can't tell you what to do. Because the amount of people it, you, you do it. that say to me, Oh no, they won't let me go past thirty eight weeks, I have to get induced and you're all you don't have to do anything. You can give birth right. in a fucking field listening yeah. to Enya if you want. You can do what yeah. you want. You don't have to go into the hospital ever. You can free birth, you can do what you want. But people are so it is that white coat thing hmm. where they're like, No, a doctor told me that I have yeah. to go in at thirty eight weeks and be induced. And being induced sometimes Times is necessary if you have things like preeclampsia or something that could put the baby in danger but most of the time it's just routine when I was pregnant with Winter and they tried to book me in for an induction I was like I'm not getting induced I don't want to I understand that getting induced can lead to a really hectic hard difficult labour although it's quicker it can be very and also lead to other interventions that have to happen like forceps and stuff or epidurals because it's too painful but they were like oh we'll just book you in for your induction and I was like why? Give me scientific, give me scientific based mm. evidence of why you need to induce me. And they were like, oh, well, the placenta starts to deteriorate after 40 weeks plus 10 days and it's harmful for the baby. And I researched that and learned that that is bullshit. Mm. That has never been, there's never been any study. It's like an old wives tale or something, well, isn't it? Or something that's just been passed along through I, the years. From the but, 50s, it was yeah. a doctor who he wanted the statistics for his hospital, hospital to be that all women gave birth on time because... I don't know why the fuck that's important. And therefore, he wouldn't let people go over their due date and he would induce them. And then he, he implemented this idea that the placenta would start to deteriorate and there has never been any science-based research to suggest that that's the case. So if anyone tells you that you have to be induced because the placenta will start to deteriorate, it's not and true. And also, what is an induction? It's chem... Do we finger in it? No, that's a sweep. Induction's chemicals. Ah, uh, Okay. I was going down the whole Harl Shipman route here. I was like, no. here, this fella. <laughs> no. In the 50s, just like... Up your dick. <laughs> Looks like you need juice, Caroline. <laughs> Open your legs. Just fingers every woman in his hometown. Um, so what you So what's to, an induction? It's they give you like a drip, like chemicals that help your you dilate and they they stimulate contractions. So the oh, your okay. body starts to push the baby out. The baby's not ready to come out. Um. So he says no to that for and then oh why the doctor had said to me well because you have an IVF baby and I went. IVF pregnancies are exactly like normal pregnancies. There's no mm. difference. And he went, I know, but like you'd be dying to meet your baby and all because it's been years and that's all. That's fucking <laughs> mental. That is a mad reason that you would want to induce me. It's because I'm di everyone's dying to meet their baby. Yeah. I can hold off for another few days. Um, uh, yeah, so that's why all that shit we didn't have to deal with whenever we did a home birth. And by home birth, you, one of your friends texts you going, geez, I didn't realise you were two hippies. You're like, it's I not know, a hippie dippy thing. Yeah. We did like jacuzzi style pool up in the living room that you can rent. Mm -hmm. And you just fill you that yeah, with water. You literally rent this pool and then you have to buy your own kind of sheet that goes over the top of it. Yeah. Just obviously because of the fluids and everything that's in it, it wouldn't be hygienic to just reuse the same yeah. pool with and no cover. The baby cover. has to come into a sterile environment, that's why. Yeah. But you don't even have to do a water birth. That's if you're oh, doing yeah, a water yeah. birth. You that's can just give birth. birth. I know a girl who did a home birth down south and she just did it on towels on her living room floor. She didn't. Mm. She might have used the bath. The water's just pain relief. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but it was amazing. I couldn't recommend it enough. It's honestly. It, it, it was It was perfect from beginning to end. Like yeah. in our situation, obviously every everybody's different and this was your second. Yeah. So it's going to be quicker, you know, statistically I think yeah. it is. But... When it happened with you, I was literally about to go on stage in Thornbreeze. That's right. In Lisburn. So my uh, so, so the, on the day, so this is basically our birth story that many people have asked for. On the day, I was in my brother's, like having a barbecue, and I felt really unwell the whole day. And then I left at seven o'clock, drove home, put winter to bed at ten to eight. Couldn't work out any Eight o'clock, my waters went, mm -hmm. and you were gigging. Yeah, and I, I have the message screen saved, and I, I literally came up on my watch. Screen saved? Screenshotted, yeah. <laughs> Fucking sound. You said like an old man. I've screen saved the timetable for the bus. <laughs> so uh, so I, I was literally, it was me, um, Arne Butler, Shane Todd, Kieran Franco, and Adam Byrne. And we were all just sitting in the wee green room at Thornbrace. All the best I, ones. And I was I was just about to go on stage. And it was it was that moment, you know, like when the Queen died, you literally text me going, She's dead. And I took a photo of it on my watch yeah, and I was yeah, just about yeah. to go on stage with Karen Bartlett and Antrim right. and it literally came up my watch. Just, she's dead. She's dead. I'm so sensitive. <laughs> so, um, so again, it came up my watch. It was like, no joke, my waters have just broken yeah. and I showed them on my watch and they were all like, holy fuck, you have to leave like right now, just go mm -hmm. home. And I was like, I, I was a bit all over the place. Because you know, it was, it, winter was 18 hours and I text you yeah. going, yes, my waters have broken, but, but this baby could be, days, could be another day. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I says to the the owner Rob um, in Thornbreeze, and I was like, "Here, 
the owner's waters have just broken. I, I, I'm okay. going to have to leave. And he goes, well, do you want to do something before you go? Because you were supposed I'm, to be emceeing. Yeah, it's my gig. I run it every month in Thornbury's Lisburn. And um, I was just about to go on stage to MC, which means you're on and off throughout the night. In between each comedian, you're getting up and doing a bit of a set or a couple of jokes or talking to the audience or whatever and just sort of keeping the night sort of in check but you were like I can't stay the whole night and I was like I can't stay the whole night so we're going to have to do just like a pass the mic situation where I'll just go on and sort of like warm them up a bit bring on the first act which was Shane that night and after that they'll just pass the mic to each other yeah. till the end of the night and Rob goes well here I'll introduce you on stage and Rob gets up and grabs the mic and he goes hello everybody um, our MC Sean Haggerty has to take off because what is his, his wife's, wife's water's just broke. And it's like, told everybody? I haven't even fucking told my parents or yeah. my brothers or my kids everyone or nothing. It's like, knows. yeah, now everyone in Lisburn knows. Yeah. So I literally went up and just talked about it for 10 minutes, just in a day is what I said. I have no idea. Oh, really? And um, so then that was my water's went to eight o'clock and yeah. then it was the contractions were really quick. Actually, no, contractions didn't start happening yet. And it got to ha- we rang a Chinese at 10 o'clock, do you remember? That's right, yeah. We, we were had a Chinese Let's downstairs. make a night of this. We, yeah. we were watching. Um, um, Shrinking. Shrinkin'. We were watching Rocky. Rocky, Rocky yeah. yeah, Rocky was on TV that night. <laughs> it was. Did yeah. we say that yet? No. Yeah. Oh wait. Right. Um, we watched Shrinking, which is fucking brilliant, on Apple TV. Yeah. With Harrison Ford and Jason Segel. Yeah. And we had the TV out the back because it was just during that it was pure sunny, sunny phase. It was just back in weather, so we had our TV out the back and we just and loaded bouncing up on and, the ball and we're watching this. Yeah. It was really funny. We were and just relaxing. We phoned the Chinese then. And a Chinese, and then contraction, contraction started, started at half ten. And for two and a half hours, I had contractions before he was born. It was really quick. But like, you sort of don't know. Like, I have a, have, I think I have a pretty high pain threshold as well. You sort of don't know what you can handle. And you don't know as well how long it's going to be. And I remember, like, just like, you were texting the midwives in our group. And they, like, they have we WhatsApp, go with your midwives, whatevs. And um, they were just like, do you think we should come now? And you're like, oh, I don't fucking know. Like, mm. uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm a sore, like, I'm in really bad pain here. And then you started filling the pill, and by the time they got there, it was ten past twelve, so like an hour and a half or whatever, two hours nearly after contraction started, and I was off my baps in yeah, pain. I had yeah. no pain relief yet, but I was delirious with pain, and that's mad because do you ever see someone who's been beat up, and they're like, Ugh. yeah, that's what you were like. That's what I was like with pain. I was delirious with pain, mm. and I was just lying on the pill like a fucking wounded snotter, just not well, yeah. and um, they came in, and I couldn't even talk to them. And then I only got gas and air then from say about 20 past 12 and he was born at five, five to, to one. one. Yeah. So I only got pain relief for like the last 20 months. And even then I didn't even use that much because I was in that much pain that I couldn't even concentrate to breathe it. And it actually fell out once and landed in the water and we pushed it back in and you went <laughs> 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 fucking near died. Inhaled like being on that the water. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so fucked off that I couldn't yeah. like... I just couldn't. Also, I practice hypno breathing, which is in through the nose and out through the mouth for different periods of like time or whatever. And you have to breathe the gas and air in through your mouth, and it totally was like the opposite of what I had trained myself to do during the contractions because I was mm. like should be in through the nose, so I couldn't focus on breathing in through my. So I basically didn't really use that much gas and air. And then I remember being like this like the baby's gonna come out now I could, I could feel his head and it's mad because the first time I didn't really have enough control to do that but I could literally feel his head coming out and just as his head was coming out who fucking wakes in her bed? Winter. Winter Hegarty. Like literally as his head was coming out 30 seconds before he was fully out she started crying and then luckily enough she stopped. She stopped. Or she, I would have been I I'd, like, I'd have had to go and see her and missed it. Aye because she, cause she can climb out of her cot and then she'd have been just roaming mm. around so it was just like for fuck's sake and then I was like you have to st-. the baby was out really quickly then yeah. so we had 10 minutes of pushing whereas with winter it was like 2 hours of pushing. And they left gas and air with us there was big canisters dropped off with us about 2 weeks before the birth yeah. just to be safe so we had that in our house throughout the yeah throughout the, the build up so it's there but born. you can't use it you don't know what to do with it until yeah. they come you yeah. know what I mean and I think it's illegal the, for you to use it until they come as well probably yeah and as well when you have a home birth and a water birth specifically obviously you have to buy a hose but it's a hose that has never been through water before so you have to buy a uh, hose completely as well completely sterile hose and with I bought ours, a garden hose and um, yeah. like just like we'll just fill us with this garden hose from the tap and my and then I like my sister-in-law who'd done a home birth was like no you need like a sterile like food like a uh, food hose or a mm. food quality I don't know what it's called but like you can't just like put your fucking garden hose in it and I was like oh yeah. well then well then that's yeah. fucking something you we, should know as well 
one thing to remember is check the connections too to the top because we checked it like the day before, mm -hmm. which meant there wasn't enough time to get another suitable thing. But luckily enough, there was like a little sort of nozzle on the end of it, and like it a screw. Our and I unplugged our shower head and put it straight into our electric shower. So rather than putting the immersion on constantly or the hot water, yeah. I just screwed it into our electric shower, turned the shower on, hit it, and it just filled up gradually. But it was great because, like, you, it is so laid back and all your shit's there. Like, do you know mm. what I mean? Like, your own snacks are there if you want yeah. your own snacks. Like, it was... Like, I want... But when I was pre going, going through labour with the winter, you had put together, like, music, like, playlists and all for me. And I was like, <laughs> I'd give you lists of songs. And then as soon as you... I remember you just pressed play on Shakira, Hips Don't Lie. I was like... Dah! And I was like, get that fuck it off. Yeah. And that was it. And you were like, that is all I had to do. It was like, for the wedding, you were just in control of the pen. For the labour, you were just in control of the music. <laughs> it didn't get played. And this time I was all, can you go get me a hot water bottle? Do you remember at the start when I was in, having contractions? You mm. went and got it. Placed it in my back for four seconds. I fucked it off. And that was the end you of that. You hated it. Hi. I put it on your back and you were all, get that off my fucking back. And I was like. <laughs> you just, just asked me to get it. I know. But it's like, you're so frustrated because like, you have, it must be frustrating for you because you obviously want to comfort your wife in labour, but you Sometimes don't, you can't do the right do. thing. Mm. You can and place your hand on my back and I'm like, get away. Yeah. One thing I'd recommend to you is like, I put playlist after playlist together on, I think it was my phone. And I brought like a Bluetooth speaker the first time. The second time I just had our wee Amazon Echo and I was just yeah. like. Next time we're going to hire a choir. <laughs> yeah. So I just shouted the woman's name. I don't want to say it because it'll... A-L-E-X-A. Yeah. yeah. So I just, you say her name and you just go play fucking yeah. pan pipes. Yeah. The whole and way then... through the birth, it was just... Do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, is it the whole time? Luckily for us, we know the wee man outside Castle Court with the wee. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. He showed up, didn't he? For the last twenty minutes. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was really, it was really good because it it felt like it it felt like you did it by yourself. Like the midwives barely had to do anything. Like they just had to. Although towards the end, I started to lose my shit, and also there comes a stage what's called transition giving birth, where you go from contractions to the baby is coming out and during that time that's when you lose the will to live like that's that's when the that's when the midwives know you're about to push about 10 months before that I thought I was all I'm just hurrying this process long and I was all I have to push everyone even though I sort of knew I didn't and I remember looking at all the midwives and she went to get the other one <laughs> <laughs> she said a wee thing got there she went she's not because if she was ready to push hmm. she wouldn't be able to tell us she she would she would be like about to die and I was all gonna push this baby out now guys it's about to come out and they were like nah um, and then it's but it's whenever you're like I can't do it I can't do it I'm gonna die then that's the midwives go right sleeves yeah. up bitches yeah, this baby's coming time. out yeah but they were lovely too weren't they the they whole, were class there was three midwives that were assigned to us so there's three in our whole in the birth at home team in the southern trust there's just yeah. those three main midwives so we met them all like at each appointment they made a point of like I've been to one so you go to this one then you'll go to the next one so you have a chance meet of meeting you, them yeah. all and then what happens was one of that team comes along with a community, a community midwife. midwife so um, but so, they're class, so you're familiar with them and they're, they're, they're great so laid back so so easy going and I think if you're working within a birth at home team you obviously want the births to be as natural and as holistic and as relaxing as possible with as least complications so you they try and do everything in order for that to happen mm. and we had a buck for about four weeks before we gave birth or I gave birth I had been like curating snacks and like this box for them in the house but then kept dipping under the snacks <laughs> no. so then, every time they came there was just fucking two packets of tato cheese and onion just and cheese a, onion. a brunch bar yeah. <laughs> like a full box of stuff for them didn't we loads of crisps and sweets yeah. and stuff and every now and then I was like well it's not fucking coming today isn't it gizzy gizzy and bomb bombs <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to Tesco again you're like fuck it I'll just dip into the midwife's box I came off and go back to Poundland and buy more shit <laughs> um, but yeah but so then they would just go and then they would just leave you to it like after we had Rocky I would just lie on the sofa you were sat beside me we were having a glass of champagne the they midwives just went were down just the out kitchen, in the kitchen doing their paperwork doing for doing paperwork hour. with a wee cup of tea and yeah they were I happy. went and had a shower up in the room and that was it and Rocky was £9.5 so he was massive hmm. um, I can't believe he hasn't wakened up I know he's been sleeping this whole time. Do you want to just lift him out and show everyone? No, I'll hold the car seat up at the end. We're nearly finished now, aren't we? Because we've just, at this stage, right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> at this stage, we've had the baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I, I would massively recommend a home birth. I think you have to, I think it would be a very difficult decision to do for your first, but lots of people do. Mm. Because um, maybe they just don't like hospitals or whatever it is. But for your second, I think it's great because you know what to expect pain-wise. 
So you know you're like not gonna die. You're like mm. you're like okay, I can I can handle this. Not gonna lie, childbirth is really. I heard Catherine Ryan say in her podcast recently where she was like, childbirth's not even that painful. Wholly disagree. It is mm. very painful, but. The reason mankind continues to exist is that they do fucking, they do that men in black thing to us afterwards doom, and wipe our memory and we're like, oh, right. that was lovely. That we're here going, that was a lovely experience. I thought I was going to die for most of it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, but in a good way. But in, but in a good way, you have your baby at the end of it. See as well, right, this this is going to sound typical man, right, eye rolling for, for a no, woman watching I, this, I know right? what you're going to say. What am I going to say? Nobody asks the man, are they all right? Yeah. Is that what you're going to say? See, every text I've got since Rocky has been born, how's mummy and baby doing? And you're like, I'm fine, thanks. Go fuck yourself. Maybe they think you're the man. Maybe. <laughs> maybe that's what they're saying. <laughs> or maybe they think you're the baby. But, so, but no, one, no one ever checks in on the, it is the, true. the person who's not given birth. I don't want to say the man because there are some same yeah. sex, you know, females yeah, who woman. go through it together yeah. and uh, the other person is very much forgotten about for 100% of the time so just make sure they're all right I, I do agree because like people don't really check in with the men but. that much <laughs> but it's not about you I just don't think you don't have the chemical offload that a woman has after giving birth like the 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 what you go through like I firmly you're not, never the same person again once you give birth you're never the same person again I don't even know if that's a good thing or a bad thing I think in some ways, it can be a great thing. I remember feeling like I had achieved the unachievable. Mm. And then at the same time, so many women give birth every single day. That you're like, mm. that's why it's so normalized. It's like, oh, it's just like, an, that's why you don't get the pat on the back. Yeah. People just like get on with it. You've given birth. So has a thousand other people today. But like what you have achieved feels like you've ran a thousand marathons in a row whilst being sledgehammered in the head. Like it's mm. crazy what you experience. And also... The, the the people don't realise is the fourth trimester the couple of months after you give birth to a baby when your body has to recover and you are constantly bleeding constantly sore constantly you, if you're breastfeeding like I am a baby is reliant on you to exist you know when you're sore and you're on tap like it's constant there mm -hmm. is a lot and the chemical imbalance like after I, I haven't this time but after I had winter I had really bad postnatal depression for a year because it was the the chemicals that that your the change in your system is so hard to adjust to that you you don't know whether you're coming or going and that a man doesn't have to deal with that yeah. physical change but yes they have to deal with the lifestyle upheaval and whatever else so I'm pretty sure it's I'm sure it's difficult but it can't be compared yeah yeah so catch yourself on okay sorry get over sorry it. for bringing it up you're right um is there anything. Do you, you want to say before we finish? Talk more about the postnatal depression because I'm sure there's a lot of people suffer in silence, and I think you know, we've gone this far. Why not? You know, it's like I, I think, I think we'll, I think I would talk about that in another one. Oh my god! Ah, uh, don't, don't. Are you all right? Sorry for bringing that up. You okay? Yeah. Can I okay? No, it's okay. Do you know what? I'm just not ready to talk about it yet. I'm okay, really okay. triggered by it. I still feel like I, I have know. so many memories of that first year after winter being really difficult. I'm not ready to talk about it. Yeah. Even my friendship, my friends be like, oh, you know, fuck whatever days it was so bad. And I still be like, I actually can't talk about it yet. Yeah. It's We're just, still more than friends, though, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll still buck eventually. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, it's, um, a, a posting depression's no joke. Like, and, I know, I know, and, I know. Um, I know. I'm still not really at a place where I feel like I. I can talk uh, yeah. about it without fucking crying. Yeah, the reason I brought it up is because I know a lot of people turn to you like for inspiration and a lot, a lot of like especially young females and females in this area or this country look up to you massively. So I know that it's because I'm five foot ten. You've been a, <laughs> I know you've been a spokesperson for a lot of things yeah. that that have happened, and I know you speak about things openly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about that. Thing I, I definitely when you're will ready, someday talk more about <clears throat> the exper experience I had of postnatal depression. Yeah. But um, so it was a dark time. I know, but I just I st I still get so upset about it. But not that I have it now with Rocky because I don't. But uh, it was a hard, it was a hard old time. Um, yeah. To finish on a on a good yeah. note, you you f you says you fit into your jeans Shh. today for the first. Word. I'm only joking. <laughs> so, <laughs> such superficial shit. Let's keep digging. Yeah, <laughs> got my jeans on today. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. That's. I mean, there's a, there's a massive road ahead of after you give birth of just trying to like feel normal again but you never will I don't think you ever will I think as well like as soon as we've had Rocky we're like oh my god I never have to be pregnant again I never have to give birth again they're so difficult yeah. but also now we can look forward to being like 
what's the next the chapter next of our life? Phase, yeah. Our family's complete. We're done. What can we? How quickly can we go on holidays without them? Yeah, because we're talking about traveling and stuff, aren't we? Too, yeah. which is exciting. You know, and maybe we have like a two or three year plan now where we're going to maybe take some time out and yeah, go see traveling. some of the world with our with some of the children. We'll choose a favorite between Rocky and Winter, and a favorite between your other three boys, and we'll just take them too. Because okay. I don't like it's too expensive otherwise. <laughs> too many kids. Yeah. Um, do you know what? Just for anybody who has listened to the podcast, always feel free to message either of us about any. Because I do get back to anyone who ever messaged me about these things yeah. about IVF and all. Because um, I really didn't have anybody to ask. Only one person that I knew had done IVF beforehand, and uh, you you wouldn't re- you wouldn't believe how many people have done it and yeah. are doing it. And if this isn't a conversation that. Uh, appeals to you that it's like alien to you and you don't understand you don't have anything to do with this world I bet you 10 people in your life do so send the link of this podcast to them to listen to because hopefully they'll find some sort of help in it or something and say if you don't know anybody there's a small chance you do but you just don't know the information because a lot of people have reached out to us since we've done stuff for like newspapers and stuff and things have come out about me and you having done IVF together Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are out there at the minute suffering in silence and going through it alone and luckily enough, we had each other and the support of our families and our friends, and we were quite open to talk about it. But a lot of people aren't open to talk about it and genuinely go through it alone. So that is, that, yeah. that's scary. And that's very sad that that has to happen in 2023. So Yeah, because um, I, there was a few people I had spoken to. <clears throat> there's a great, there's a Facebook page called um, IVF Northern Ireland or something like yeah. that. And you would not believe yeah. how many people are on there. So supportive. And they're amazing. And they're an, they're a font of information. A font? A fountain? A font is words. Fountain. Fountain of information um, from all these women and men who are on there. But the, the amount of them that are on there with aliases as their Facebook profiles because they don't want people to find out who they are. And I'm on there going, hello. <laughs> you know, and they're like, are you off of that little lad? <laughs> Um, right, that's us for today. I yeah. think. I just want to say as well, like I'm, like you've gone through this twice now. Like having given birth, and I'm really proud of you, and I love you, and oh, thank um, you, I love you too. Fair play to you. Fair play to you for having more kids when your life was already ruined. I was just. <laughs> you were just things. getting a full night's sleep. Yeah, I was just getting back on track. I was like, who am? Oh wait, two more. High five! Thanks everybody for listening. Tune in the next time. I'll cry again. <laughs> <laughs>